Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about high cholesterol and how big a problem it really is. So heart disease is still the leading cause of death in the United States. It accounts for about one-third of all the deaths, which basically means there's one death every 40 seconds from heart disease. Even though so many people are on statin drugs to lower their cholesterol, and they're following low-fat diets. This is because cholesterol per se does not clog the arteries or cause plaque. Therefore, lowering the cholesterol should not be the goal. Instead, keeping your arteries clean is what we should focus on. Let's take a look at this issue a little deeper because it's very important to understand and many of us have been misguided by incorrect information along the way. So in the body, we have a network of physical channels that the food travels through once we chew it and swallow it. The first channel it encounters is the digestive tract. And once the food is broken down into very fine particles, it absorbs next into the bloodstream and travels through those channels, which we call arteries and veins. And then from there, the blood actually becomes things like urine, sweat, tears, toxins, lymphatic fluids, and all these two are traveling through physical channels until they exit the body into the bowel movement, urine, and the sweat through these little micro channels. But today's focus will be on the channels that carry blood, like the arteries, because this is what we want to have a clear understanding about and how to keep these specific channels open. Now, if the blood vessels shrink, get clogged, inflamed, or become hardened with plaque, then we could have a heart attack. So it's important to avoid the foods which can cause all these issues. For example, the nightshade vegetables, which are eggplant, tomatoes, white potatoes, and bell peppers, all contain nicotine, which immediately shrink the channels down once we eat them, really within a few minutes of eating them. Next, we should avoid food that clogs the channels. And it's important to note here that foods which clog the channels may or may not have cholesterol in them. For example, you should avoid the heavy meats like beef, veal, pork, ham, sausage, bacon, deli meats like pepperoni and corned beef, and also avoid hard aged cheeses as opposed to the freshly made soft curd cheeses, which are okay to have like cottage cheese, regatta cheese, paneer, and fresh mozzarella. All of these foods do contain cholesterol and could potentially clog your arteries over time. But then there are a number of foods which don't contain cholesterol, which are also clogging, like the nut butters, like peanut butter, or almond butter, and sunflower seed butter. Unfermented soy products like tofu, adamame, and soy milk, among some others, which we would really need to be avoiding as well because they clog the arteries. So let's dig a little deeper here and look at one very important fact which doctors and their misled patients are confused about how certain bad fats may cause plaque in the arteries independent of what your cholesterol might show. For example, you could have high cholesterol, but your arteries could be squeaky clean. And on the other hand, you could have low cholesterol and have clogged arteries if you keep eating the foods which clog them up, like lots of tofu or almond butter. So do keep avoiding these to keep your arteries open. But I would like to spend the bulk of the time discussing good and bad fats. Because from what I can see in my very busy Ayurvedic practice, many people, including strict vegetarians, are clogging their arteries, even if they're very thin and physically fit. So it turns out that it's not 100% correct to make a blanket statement and say that cholesterol clogs the arteries. The real truth is that it's oxidized cholesterol, which is the main component of artery clogging plaque. This is more important than what your total cholesterol might be, or even what your LDL or HDL numbers are. Again, now that we know that the type of cholesterol that dangerously builds up inside the artery walls is oxidized cholesterol. Oxidation is what happens when something rusts. It's a chemical reaction. So oxidized cholesterol has gone through a chemical reaction where now the LDL cholesterol can become damaged in much the same way that iron oxidizes and turns into rust. And it's the oxidized LDL which creates plaque. So you could have high D LDL and not create plaque if it's not oxidized. And you could have low LDL 
but if it's oxidized, it can cause inflammation and lots of other damage to the arteries. Only LDL can be oxidized. HDL cholesterol cannot. So where do we get oxidized cholesterol in our diet? Well, the more processed the oils, the more oxidized it becomes. The worst types of fats are vegetable cooking oils like sunflower, safflower oils, canola oil, and many others. Be careful when you eat out because most of the restaurants are using a blend of these very cheap vegetable oils for that very reason. They're cheap and they can't afford to run a restaurant on high quality olive oil or ghee. But here's the very ironic thing. Butter is almost impossible to oxidize. And eating ghee or clarified butter is even better because it has the highest smoking point, which is the temperature where the oil oxidizes than any type of fat or oil, 485 degrees to be more exact. That's very high heat before the ghee will even oxidize. This is why I cringe when I hear all my patients from India tell me that they have given up ghee in favor of sunflower oil because ghee contains cholesterol and sunflower oil doesn't. The same thing happened here in the United States as well as in many other countries. Here we were eating corn oil thinking we were safe. But see, since doctors never had a class in nutrition, they mistakenly taught us that cholesterol clogs the arteries, and since cholesterol comes from an animal, we should avoid butter and eat margarine, vegetable oils, and Crisco, which we all did. And this is when the rates of heart attacks and strokes began to skyrocket. And they've continued to climb as people follow these guidelines carefully, avoiding butter and ghee. So let's clear up this misinformation misinformation once and for all. There are several ways oxidized cholesterol builds up in your bloodstream. From eating commercially fried foods like fried chicken and french fries and eating polyunsaturated fatty acids which are found in vegetable oils. In fact partially hydrogenated oils or trans fats are some of the unhealthiest fats you can eat. Processed foods are also sources of oxidized cholesterol including margarines, fast foods, fried foods, and commercially baked goods. All these foods cause inflammation as the oxidized LDL particles create damage on the inside of your arteries. And here's the other important thing to know. You might not consider these foods as fats per se, and therefore might not realize the damage you're creating in your arteries when you eat these, like the chocolate bar, with the hydrogenated fats to make it kind of shiny and waxy, or your favorite baked goods coming from your corner bakery, which contain trans fats, or that delicious croissant used in making your breakfast sandwich. The real truth is that the low fat hype and overuse of statins has done nothing to prevent deaths from cardiovascular disease, nothing. We should have good fats in the diet, like high quality extra virgin olive oil and ghee, and milk, whole milk, from grass-fed cows because if the cows are fed grains, their milk and butter will contain the dangerous omega-6 fats. But if they're fed grass, the milk and the butter will contain the heart-healthy omega-3s. Now, the fats from coconuts and avocados are also very good for us, but their oils are a little too heavy to digest. Unless you live in a really hot climate and have a strong digestive fire to break down and assimilate, these somewhat very heavy and cold fats. And don't forget, always boil your milk before you drink it to melt down the fats for best absorption in your cells. If you drink milk cold, the hard, heavy fat molecules just hang around and clog the channels, which is why so many people say that they get mucus when they drink milk, because they're drinking it cold. In addition to good fats, here's some other important tips to keep your arteries clean. First, Use spices in the diet, like ginger, pepper, green chilies, and cinnamon. All of these reduce the clumping together of the platelets in the blood, which will keep your blood nice and thinned out, which in turn reduces the amount of plaque formation. Beets and other green leafy vegetables are a rich source of nitrates, which your body converts to nitric oxide, which improves blood vessel function and reduces inflammation. Nitric oxide is a molecule whose most important function is vasodilation, which means it has the ability to relax the muscles of the blood vessel walls 
causing them to widen, which increases circulation. Oats contain antioxidants, which inhibit inflammatory proteins, which are called cytokines, as well as other types of adhesion molecules, which are clogging to the arteries. Nuts and seeds boost the HDL cholesterol and improve the blood vessel function. Now, olive oil, this is all important to know. A 2018 study showed that just one ounce of olive oil a day improved the blood vessel function and reduced inflammatory markers because of its high levels of polyphenol compounds. There's a reason people in Italy live so long. They drizzle their high quality olive oil on everything before they eat it. Good quality olive oil can actually lower the very bad, H, the, the bad LDL cholesterol. Now, the best olive oils to buy are either unrefined, where they're produced without any chemical or heat extraction processes, and they're higher in quality than the cheaper brands. Cold press is the least refined and the most natural process in olive oil production. And that's why the cold pressed oils will be higher in both the quality and the price, but it's worth it. It's good to know that most of the olive oils in our local supermarkets are refined, which means that they're processed using heat or chemicals, and many of them introduce other types of vegetable oils into the mix, resulting in an overall lower quality olive oil. If you've ever been to Italy, you know how seriously they take their food. Their olive oil is excellent, top-notch, high quality. But here in the States, most of our cheaper olive oils in the supermarket shelves are overly processed and contain a blend of vegetable oils. And this is a very important point to always remember. When you heat vegetable oils, whether it's sunflower oil, canola oil, or a low quality olive oil with lots of vegetable oils blended into it, it wreaks havoc in your body in two ways. When you heat these oils, they turn into a poison. And since everything you swallow has to be processed by the liver, it ends up damaging the liver, creating much of the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease many of us are diagnosed with. And the second problem associated with these vegetable oils is that when you heat them, they form a plastic compound that clogs your arteries. So think twice before you haphazardly buy olive oil at your local grocer. You might think you're protecting your arteries by eating olive oil the way the people do in the Mediterranean countries. But in fact, you could be risking a heart attack or stroke by unknowingly eating poor quality olive oil or poor quality vegetable oils. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts reduce the arterial calcification. This is important because once there's inflammation in the artery wall, calcium will deposit there to protect it. And this is basically what plaque is. It's oxidized fats with calcium deposit into it. So, to summarize, I've seen so many patients in my practice through the years who present with high cholesterol and yet their arteries are clean because they eat the good fats like ghee and very high quality olive oil loaded with polyphenols. And I've seen the skinny vegetarians suffer heart attacks because they were eating lots of foods which clog their arteries, which don't contain cholesterol. Foods like tofu and almond butter and artificial cheeses like soy cheese or vegan cheese. So because there was no cholesterol in these foods, they were fooled into thinking their arteries were safe. Then they suffered the consequences when it was too late and their arteries became clogged. I hope you understand all the information presented here so you switch your mode of thinking from a low fat diet with an emphasis on keeping cholesterol low to a diet which has ample amounts of good fats found in ghee, unrefined cold pressed extra virgin olive oil, boiled whole milk, freshly made soft curd cheeses, avocados, coconuts, nuts and seeds. And always make sure you include fruits, vegetables and spices which can keep your blood vessels open and the blood nice and thinned out, reducing the chance of clogged arteries, strokes, and heart attacks. Thank you.